does a molecule of oxygen take as it enters the body? That's your first try this question. At this moment, you pause the video and you write your answers down. In the next video that will come, which I think it will be circulatory system, you will get your answer for this one. But if you want to call 382-4929 and ask if your answer is correct, feel free to do so. Okay, let's continue. Now, we're going to look a bit more on this um, filtering of the air thing. Now, we're inside of the air passage and we're also the air passage leading from the nasal passage going all the way down to the trachea. Now, we remember that this black thing right here is the unclean air and the what? Bacteria. Now, I mean, this, me that, me not a perfect artist, you know, so I draw one look at something look like what? Ciliae. Now, they say ciliae, look at it, it looks what? finger like and it's projecting what outwards it's hanging down so if you look on your nose but I'm, you know i can't see my little nose now but may i feel my little ear down my nose can you feel your ears on your little nose look, put your nose, your nose put your nose put your nose nose man and pull the ear down you feel them you know feel them you know hear you you know feel them yes man i feel my one you feel your one ah i feel my one so but guess what those little ear like structures that you feel with your finger now it's called the ciliae and yes them have a little function now this yellow thing right here is called the mucus the same mucus you saw in the picture before and this cell right here is called the goblet cells it's more than one cell but we just use one right there's goblet cells and this one now is called the ciliated epithelial what cells so these cells covers the lining of your ear passage now you want to know what happened and once again, take your pen and paper and your two eyes. Someone will say, yeah, you want your two eyes. And guess what? You're going to write a sentence or two and describe what you observe right now. So pay attention and see what happens. Right now, you think me they gone? No, man, me just I make you observe and then write. Now, notice what happened a while ago. Let me play it back a little left for myself. This is the unclean air with bacteria, and notice what happened to the cilia. I know it start move them, a dance. You see it? Them a jerk. What them a, them a dance? You know what kind of dance? I don't know what kind of dance them a do. You don't know for the we skip them and lower or whichever dance it is, but them a dance, right? Now you notice now. We could play it back a little there. The mucus is secreting right there, sir. So when it leave here, sir, it's secretion that. The ear, the dirty ear will come down. The mucus right there, sir, change colour. Take away the dirt and the bacteria and it move up outwards. It come out of your, your ear passage. And a clean air what continue downward into what your lungs so that is basically what happens but you see when these cilia vibrate you know when you sweep out dirt it just has vibrate and a move that was, that's the impression i want to give you it has sweep the dirt out and that's why you see this um thing go up here the the, the mucus with the the ear and the bad the dirty ear the dirty dirt and the and the bacteria and the dirty dirt you know dirt dirty so Whatever, man. You don't understand what I'm trying to don't you? Good. So the cilia really is responsible for moving the, the mucus with dirt and bacteria out of your ear what? passage. What's the ear passage? It starts from your nose hole go all the way down to your bronchiolis. Very good. So that's basically how it clear it. So, you understand? If you don't understand, call me and cuss me off. All right, you know my number, man. Very good. And it's at the end of the video, too. So you can call me and cuss me off. All right, let's continue. All right. Now note, the cilia which lines the trachea helps to sweep the mucus up the trachea into the back of the mouth where they are 
swallowed and you saw that in the picture before don't it now what else now note the mucus trapped the dust you realize that this was yellow before and then it turned black yeah so it trapped the dust and germs so it turned black and what from air inhaled because the air actually came in it came in black if you saw that before uh, from the atmosphere so what the mucus does the function of the mucus is to trap the dust you know hold on upon it and the germs and don't make it go down you know your, your, your system you understand good so that's what the mucus do so pay close attention to that one there all right let's continue now now we're looking at so now we are the, you, you realize that the, 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 the ear now actually enters your lungs and it also now enter what the alveolus so gas entering the blood capillary now note now these little circuits you see right here says so called um red blood cells and this little thing right here is called the blood capillary good now this is really for me it is really clean air all right now let us see what happens right here now I call it oxygen because note now that air enters the lungs but oxygen is extracted from air. And let me show it out. Air enters the lungs but oxygen is extracted from the air. Alright. You can't say me never did tell us. If you read it on book and say oh sir never did say that in the video. Let me say no. Make sure you open up your ears and listen. All right, good. So air enters the lungs, but oxygen is being extracted from it. All right, let's see what happens right here now. So we are now going to go into the alveolus. So let's observe what happens. So again, take out your pen and paper and write down what you observe. This now is called the red blood cells. Right there is called red blood cells. And right here is called the what? Blood capillary. Good. And let's note what happens now. Is the red blood cells moving in the blood? Okay. Oh, very good so note what happens basically now is that as air enters oxygen will diffuse across this membrane of the air sac very good little later we'll start to look at the characteristics of the alveoli and notice and little later on you'll learn that this alveolus is really called the gas exchange one surface but what really happens is that it enters and it is being carried by the what red blood cells good so the red blood cells are the cells that actually carries oxygen all right a little later we'll learn a little bit more about that now where does the oxygen finally go now make some notation this one is oxygen now this is carbon dioxide this is the blood this blue ear represent blood and you know what this is already red blood cells and this is a circulatory system that transport the oxygen and the other gas in and out of the body and this is a part of the lung inside the lungs right here which is called the alveolus and let us see what happens right here now now take a pen and paper again and observe what happens then write right now notice what happens now the oxygen will leave the alveolus and is taken it to the what cells and carbon dioxide is removed from the cells and taken outside of the what alveolus so where does the oxygen finally goes it goes to the what cell a little later on we'll find out where in the cell it actually what goes all right let's go and you see the circulatory system is basically what transports the gases in and out very good so right here is where they exchange what gases right here right at the surface there 
one going in and one coming out however the so oxygen from the air oxygen from the air into our blood and carbon dioxide out of our blood into the air this is the definition of gas exchange note the definition of the definition of gas exchange is oxygen from the air coming from the air into our blood which you saw and carbon dioxide out of our blood into the air so air enters of course and then oxygen comes into our blood goes to the cell right here carbon dioxide leave the cells enter the blood leave the blood and into the air that is the definition for gas exchange right let's continue we are now going to look at the gas exchange surface now in your exams you are required to to be able to describe the characteristics of the gas exchange surface in other words what it looks like what it feels like etc now remember now that the gas exchange surface for the humans is the alveoli so the alveoli is the gas exchange surface in what humans now of course this piece of the structure here right here as you can see is really the bronchiole or one of the bronchiole which have different air sacs attached to it so you realize that when air enters the bronchiole it will fill up the air sacs right here good yeah so this so this air sac itself will be filled with air good of which now oxygen will be extracted from this air sac air, um, air sac or is air space rather to go into the what the bloodstream now for one of the first characteristics you can look at if you realize these red lines here you may call them veins but actually they are called blood capillaries they're very they are one cell thick so the blood capillaries are basically one cell thick and we're going to look at what exactly happens right here okay first thing to note may I ask a question what is this good it's a what a tissue now we're going to compare a tissue to a sponge now question which of these two objects would pick up water faster would it be the tissue or the sponge which one all right and why would you say that now I am thinking that you said the what the tissue why, but why would you say the tissue if you said the tissue right no well the tissue is thin and the sponge is what thick so one of the characteristics of the gas exchange surface is what it's thinness the thinner it is is the faster the oxygen it will travel from the lungs into the bloodstream so the, 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 the one of the characteristics then of your gas exchange surface is the fact that it is what thin so we can say that note that the alveoli is like the what tissue the alveoli surface is one cell thick now this is the alveoli this cylinder shaped object here is representing the alveoli and this blue object right is representing the cell as compared to this tissue right here you realize it's made of many different what cells so this is if you call the number of cells you can determine how thick this shape is but this shape is really one cell what thick and that's what I mean by one cell thick so one of the characteristics of the gas exchange surface is that it is what thin it is moist it's covered with blood capillaries so one of the characteristics as I said to you before that the gas exchange surface is really it is thin and very thin in fact and they 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 only have there are only one cell thick and the capillary walls are also one cell thick so these um red lines you see right there they are basically one cell what thick good so any oxygen molecule 
can only only has to diffuse across this small thickness to get into the blood so as you realize now even with water the water can fill up this tissue quickly than it can fill up this sponge right so that is one of the reasons why the gas exchange surface is so thin just to accommodate the, the speed of oxygen getting into your bloodstream now it is also moist as you can see and it's a special cells in the alveoli secrete a water or what liquid so the alveoli these alveoli cells are actually made up of special cells which release water good they release water and as a result of that they make the area or the environment of the oxygen moist and so oxygen now can dissolve in this liquid before diffusing across the wall of the alveolus now you might be asked what I mean by diffusing now can you imagine that you stand in a corner and you are somebody or somebody standing stands in the corner and ease their body like, you know the, the poop and then all of a sudden everybody in the classroom start to smell it you know why they start to smell it because it spread from the corner to other areas of the classroom and that is how the oxygen actually spreads it, it spreads from a concentrated area which would have been in the air sac or the alveolus and move elsewhere into the, the bloodstream now yes it is covered with blood capillaries now the blood capillaries itself is what actually transports or carries the oxygen away from the respiratory um, surface right so it carries the it actually carries the oxygen away from there to other parts of the body or to other cells in the body that needs the oxygen to carry out respiration very good so therefore you're breathing so it have a, a good supply of oxygen because of that so your breathing movements keep your lungs well supplied with oxygen as well All right now it has a large surface area now the larger the surface area is the more oxygen that 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 you can that, that, that you can collect from the air and be transported to other cells in the body and it even helps in, in, in the matter of working very faster take for instance that you have a large puddle of water maybe on your kitchen counter or on the kitchen kitchen floor and what would happen is that with your if you have a piece of cloth to wipe up that large area if you have a much larger flat flat piece of cloth cleaning the drying up that that large amount of water would be much faster than using a piece of cloth isn't that so good so it's the same thing with a large surface area surface area meaning like right here of the tissue good and the larger if they if you double this or you triple this you can clean up more water same time much what faster than using a piece of tissue alone to clean up the water so it's the same thing the, 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 the benefits of having a large surface area is to get as much oxygen in a faster time as possible all right so these really are the characteristics of the gas exchange surface another concept that is used cellular respiration now if you realize the word cell right here is in the word cellular now res respiration takes place inside of what cell now we're going I want you to play pay close attention to what's on your television screen now if you notice now that here we have this blue sky blue looking circle represents what oxygen and this green lime looking circle represents what glucose and this orange shape figure here represents our mitochondria and the green broken lines represents our cell surface membrane this blue area here represents our what nucleus 
and then these smaller circles here represents what our small vacuole and of course the white area of the cell you know it's called a cytoplasm and this yellow shape figure this yellow shape is representing ribosomes <clears throat> now i'm going to ask you i'm going to ask you please do follow my instruction you know sometimes students don't want to follow teacher's instruction but listen if you really want to learn from this material just follow the instructions given now what are the what what is the instruction you may be asking now what you're going to do for me now you're going to take a pencil and a paper or a pen and a paper you're going to observe what happens so if you see any movement take place you write a sentence or two and describe what you saw you understand that all right good make sure you do that now you know all right so let's pay attention to what happens here now okay write a sentence and tell me what happened right there good you saw the, ox the oxygen moving into the what cell and where the oxygen went where in the cell the oxygen went it went into the mitochondria all right we'll soon find out why it went into the mitochondria now let's look again okay so you saw that the glucose entered the cell and entered the same mitre what chondria now you realize that they are together now what is going to happen right here is that the oxygen is going to oxidize the what glucose all right so that's a chemical reaction that actually takes place inside the mitochondria now you're going to realize that says so the glucose or the oxygen rather plus the glucose so they're together now they're going to carry out a particular function or action rather so let's see what happens when these two combine together you see the color change means that there's a chemical reaction what took place so oxidize oxidization just took place a while ago can i ask you to do me a favor go for your dictionary and look up for the word oxidization and find out what it means and so you can understand otherwise what really happened right there so it's our color change let's see so it's lime green then it is pink so it is, it, the glucose is now oxidized now what happens after it becomes oxidized so, so what this is another circle this red circle now represents what carbon dioxide so what happens now so after the oxygen oxidizes the glucose carbon dioxide becomes a byproduct or it is released from or you know released from the glucose now what happens right there it leaves the what cell so carbon dioxide will leave the what cell now the action that just took place a while ago is called cellular respiration so cellular respiration really is where oxygen oxidizes glucose to release what carbon dioxide and you realize the carbon dioxide didn't stay in the cell it actually what leaves the cell so it's going out now you you saw at another on an earlier in the lesson where ox, where carbon dioxide leaves the 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 the, 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 the body through a, through um breathing out are exhaling and you saw when oxygen enter the body through what inhaling so right here as soon as the carbon dioxide is released it is released from the cell or released from glucose in the cell it leaves the cell and then it leaves the body whenever you exhale now what have what else is being released from glucose now this star looking thing now will represent um will represent energy so carbon dioxide is released and also what energy so where the energy goes goes it goes towards the adp what chemical so this triangle thing represents what adp chemical and notice what happens after this notice the color right here so the color of it good and notice what happens it changes what color 
and also it becomes ATP. Now, what happens right here? So, when energy is released from the glucose, it is stored in a chemical called ATP. And ATP stands for adeno triphosphate, right? Adeno triphosphate. And ADP stands for adeno diphosphate. Now, I want you to listen to this carefully. It says ATP carries energy to the sites needing it. So, for example, your muscle cells will need um, energy, or parts of your muscle need energy. So, ATP will actually carry this energy to these different places that need it. So, one, respiration takes place inside the mitochondria, which is called the powerhouse of the cell otherwise so if they ask you where what's the name given to the site where respiration takes place it's the mitochondria. what conjure good and then what is being released carbon dioxide is being released and the other thing that is being released is what energy which is stored as ATP in a chemical and is actually what carried to other cells now it is said that respiration is going on in all in, the, in all living cells all the time so every time respiration takes place and present in the cells is a substance called what ADP so you saw ADP before which is adenosine diphosphate and each molecule of ADP has two phosphate groups firmly attached now the, the energy from the respiration which you just saw is used to add another phosphate group to each molecule to make what ATP so before let's look at it again so before it has two for this D stands for di di means what two so it has two phosphate phosphate sorry groups firmly what attached and let me give an example of that so here's one of the phosphate group and this is attached good so we have two phosphate groups attached so now this is ADP now when energy is being released from respiration right here so that energy now carries another phosphate group another phosphate making it what A T P. good so what is happening right here is that this energy the energy from respiration is used to add another phosphate group to each molecule to make it what ATP so the energy that is removed from the respiration site and goes towards ADP the chemical what it basically does it carries another phosphate group or it allows another phosphate group to be added to the ADP molecule now we call it what ATP so basically the energy is being stored as you would say uh, you have different forms of energy so you have what you saw a while ago was chemical energy right here being stored in the glucose and then when the energy is released it becomes potent um, mechanical energy because it basically travels and when it is stored again now in ATP it's stored back as what chemical energy so when when we need energy now one of these phosphate um, group will move away and energy will be what released so here it is now this third phosphate group is easily separated from the other two and when it is energy is quickly released when it well when the two of them when they separate energy is quickly released and ADP is what formed so ATP is used as a carrier of energy keeping energy when it is not needed and releasing it when it is needed so ATP what it carries the energy it keeps the energy and it's released the energy when it is what needed now another thing the molecule represents the basic energy unit of the what cell so only a small amount of energy is released when one molecule of ATP is what broken down all right and 
to, to tell a little bit more about it, it says when larger amounts of energy are needed, more ATP molecules are what? Used. So ATP is sometimes called the energy coin or the currency of the cell. And that's basically what cellular respiration is all about. All right? Now, in the exam now, you're asked sometimes to state the worded equation of cellular respiration, which is glucose plus oxygen equal to carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. All right? And that's cellular respiration. Good? So, you see carbon oxide right here. It's supposed to be carbon dioxide. So, it's supposed to be C, A, R, B, O, N, D, I, O, X, I, D, E. So it's supposed to be carbon dioxide, not carbon oxide. We apologize for that. Thank you very much. So your word equation is supposed to be glucose plus oxygen equal to carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. Yes, water vapor is also released from this site and it leaves the cell and leaves the body as well. Okay. All right. So let's continue. All right, let's cut types of respiration now. Now, we have two types of respiration, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Now, in your syllabus, or you're asked to state the differences between these two forms of respiration. So, we'll look at the characteristics of aerobic respiration separately from the characteristics of anaerobic respiration. Now, with aerobic respiration, you need what? Oxygen. So when you normally breathe in oxygen, you're basically respiring what? Aerobically. So aerobic respiration takes place in your cells whenever you are using oxygen. Now, the products of aerobic respiration are carbon dioxide, water, and what? energy so what we spoke about earlier on in the lesson was basically about aerobic respiration now aerobic respiration supplies you with lots more energy which is greater energy right there plenty more energy right very good now on the other side in anaerobic respiration it doesn't use any oxygen and if it does insignificant amount of oxygen but basically you are told that it doesn't use what any oxygen at all good and what else now the products of anaerobic respiration are alcohol carbon dioxide and little energy so you realize that the alcohol replaces the water right here now in the industries like the Jamaica rain Ray and his nephews, you know, they use anaerobic respiration to produce alcohol, right? Fermentation, as per some persons would call it, right? So, therefore, this is used in, in the industry, in the factories out there, anaerobic respiration to produce alcohol. So, what they want from this form of respiration is your alcohol content, right? So those are the products. So the one, one, two differences between anaerobic respiration and anaerobic is that one uses oxygen and the other doesn't. One produces uh, water and the other doesn't, and the other produces alcohol. And one gives more energy than the other. And here it is. So this one has less energy. All right. So both give energy, but one is greater than the other. All right. Another concept that. Um, they look at in the exam oxygen depth now, I want you to look at this picture and write a sentence or two now the students when I ask you to write a sentence or two I mean it if you don't do that this lesson will not help you so my question to you do you want this lesson to help you well if you said if your answer was yes follow my instruction 
So you're going to take your pen and paper and write a sentence to describe what's happening to this person right there. Alright, so here's a question. What's happening in this picture? Well, I guess you would say that he's tired. Did you say that? Good. You probably say he's tired and he's breathing hard, etc. Very good. No. So you are saying that this cyclist is tired. Now we're going to look at what happens before the cyclist became tired. Now, when the cyclist is riding, he's breathing what? Normally. And look at what happens right here. Good. So you breathe in normally, and that was relatively what? Slow. So, so in diagram one, he breathes in slowly. Now let's look at what happens after. This is when he becomes what? Tired. Wow. Did you see that? Let's try it again. Wow. So he breathes much what? Faster, much what? Harder when he's what tired so this is what is happening in this diagram here this person is now breathing very fast and you realize what happens to so how does he breathe in diagram two and the answer was what faster good now notice now that he, he took in more oxygen this time than in than in case number one so before he took in just two circles and the circles represent oxygen and he took in lots more than two. So he, when he breathes harder and faster, he takes in, he's taking in more oxygen than when he breathes what? Normal. And, okay. Now, anaerobic respiration started to take what? Place. So when anaerobic respiration is taking place, eventually you're going to breathe what? Harder. Now, by this time, lactic acid started to what? Build up. So, in humans, when you respire anaerobically, instead of producing alcohol, you produce what we call what? Lactic what? Acid. So, right here, this man, why is feeling tired and weak? is because of the production or the accumulation of lactic acid in his what? Muscles. Now, this happens because there was not enough what, oxygen for aerobic respiration. But remember, he still needs energy. Good. But there comes a point in time when he becomes tired. And when you're tired is when you're in need of what? Oxygen. So he starts to breathe harder and harder. <gasps> yes, because he needs what? A lot of oxygen. Now, guess what? I am quite sure that when you have money they feel rich don't it yeah man and you feel like you you, 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 you know nothing around because you have enough money to buy what you want to buy but eventually one time a time also comes when you don't have no money and you're broke so you start go all over the place on a bigger bigger twenty dollar a year, a bigger ten dollar a year, a bigger hundred dollar a year. And you start big enough money because you don't have the money and you have to buy food because you're hungry. You have bills to pay and all of that. Now guess what? The time when you have money, that is when everything normal and that is a, that is that is the stage right here when you're breathing slowly. But when you don't have the money, you start to go all over the place and beg, beg for money. Because you have some debts to pay. You follow now? Your money in this case, money in this case is what? Oxygen. So oxygen, so think about it now. This happens because there was not enough money. You follow now? So this happens because there was not enough oxygen for aerobic respiration. Good? So, is, so what is oxygen debt then? The shortage of oxygen is called oxygen so when, when you have when you're short on oxygen you have what you call it an oxygen debt means you don't have, you don't have enough oxygen a shortage not enough oxygen so really of a fact oxygen debt is really when the body lacks enough oxygen or doesn't have enough oxygen so of course you have to breathe hard enough to to, to get a lot of oxygen to pay off the oxygen what 
that's why I breathe very hard good so what happens well the oxygen will oxidize the lactic acid and removes the oxygen debt so you need a lot of oxygen one to remove the lactic acid and to, and to remove the oxygen depth so you can start breathing normally again and that's all it is all right i hope it was very simple for you to understand that now try this question you think it was going to get away don't it no try this question now the amount of lactic acid in muscles increases when they are lacking in so you're going to pause your video and write your answer to this question. Of course, you know that the answer for this question will be given in your next lesson. And if you really want to know the answer to this question, you simply call 382-4929. All right, so I'm going to look at um, smoking. Now, let us identify what's on the the diagram here now this circle right here represents air right clean here actually well not really clean but air fresh air and this one represents your red blood cell and of course this is your bloodstream you know where the red blood cell flows along now let us observe what's happening right here right you saw that the air entered the body through the nose down the trachea and uh, you know it, and it enters the lungs and then it is entered the the red blood cell and it is also carried by the red blood cell you saw that right very good now note that this red blood cell here is made up of a, a chemical called hemoglobin Good. And those persons who eat green leaf vegetables will certainly have a lot of hemoglobin. You know why? Because the iron from the green leaf vegetables are what is used to make what? Hemoglobin. Good. Now, what is it about this hemoglobin? Now, add means what? The oxygen is attracted to the what? Hemoglobin. So when oxygen is added to hemoglobin, it is equal to oxyhemoglobin. So what we have right here with the, the hemoglobin inside the red blood cell with the oxygen, it forms oxyhemoglobin. Good. Now, many chemicals forms cigarettes, meaning many chemicals are used to make cigarettes, such as nicotine. No, you didn't see that, did you? Now let's look at this. It's a cigarette. All right, so now, what's that? What do you call it now? A spliff, or my boss, my smoke him cigar, or my smoke him chellum, what them call it, chellum. Some all sort of thing them smoking, right? And when know say my kill off him like a self, but anyway, yeah, you hear that? My jaw, you know? oh, go on, so go on and I blow him thing. But anyway, the realize I didn't blow away my do. Anyway, so there's many chemicals form cigarettes such as nicotine. This pink thing represent nicotine now notice what happens right here so let's look at it again now, keep your eyes on the screen now and notice what happens all right okay you notice where the nicotine ends up in the head now the nicotine came from this this is smoke from the cigar from 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 the smoking and it travels down the trachea enters a lung enters the bloodstream and it's actually carried by the red blood cell as well and it carried and it's, it reaches to the what the brain now if the effect it has on the brain is simple this the nicotine is what really caused the addiction here it is so the nicotine caused you to become addictive to smoking no, we can understand because the chemical basically stimulates your brain activity. Good? Yes, yeah, so the nicotine 
in the smoke or it paralyzes what we call the cilii lining the track which help to remove dirt and what bacteria so nicotine also does this so both these effects reduce the space of air now I am going to look at something even more so nicotine itself it does two things it causes you to continually what smoke and it also helps in paralyzing the cilii remember the cilii the thing that helps to move the mucus and dirt out of the the respiratory system yes now if can you imagine if the cilia cannot move they are paralyzed that means that whatever is supposed to be moved out by the cilia will not move out and it will remain there and block up the system therefore not allowing enough space for for air to pass what freely and this can cause serious damages good all right so nicotine also causes what we call constriction or narrowing of the what bronchioles so nicotine also causes constriction or narrowing of the bronchioles and this cuts down on the amount of air able to enter from the outside and the damage gets progressively worse as long as smoking continues to be or smoke rather continues to be what inhaled so the nicotine coming from the smoke is not good for you all right good now another substance so use this orange circle to represent that substance and that is called carbon monoxide not carbon dioxide but carbon carbon what monoxide no so what happens everything enters the bloodstream and this one is now being carried by what the red blood cell now remember oxygen is carried by the red blood cell and now carbon monoxide is also carried by the what red blood cell now did you know this that hemoglobin will choose to combine with carbon monoxide instead of oxygen can you imagine this all right so you have two girls slimmers and a nice fluffy one right now many men are attractive to the fluffy one but the slim the slimmers she have a good personality she she, she will take care of the man so sometimes the man will go after she because she have a little have a little body yes and him go after she and him go on work with she but as soon as the fluffy one I mean, I talk about Miss Kitty now but as soon as the fluffy one come him no same eyes start move from the slimmers over to the fluffy one and guess who him all start go with the fluffy one and leave the slimmers with good female no? the fluffy one all the fluffy one to want is the money the fluffy one only want his money so guess what but he don't know that so he move gone to the fluffy one and guess what happened afterwards no fluffy one drain him pocket and mash him up had the same thing with carbon monoxide and and oxygen oxygen is like the slimmers carbon monoxide like the fluffy one so what happened now carbon monoxide the the, the, the the hemoglobin now which is the man himself is more attracted to the carbon monoxide so it will carry the carbon monoxide instead but the carbon mon 